This is my passport. As you can see, it is a passport from the United States, the one and only country of which I'm a citizen. It's a cool little booklet featuring iconic scenes and quotes from American history, but there's an even cooler feature. It grants me access into other countries. These blue books are valid entry and exit ID everywhere in the world except North Korea, because they just had to be that way. But how exactly does it work? Well, a passport is effectively just a form of ID, but one that other countries also recognize and can stamp upon entry and sometimes also upon exit. Passports are effectively representations of your nationality, and basically a way to prove you are who you say you are. Now before we get into all the fun little details about different passports around the world, let's talk about some basic passport protocol. You know, just some stuff you need to know about your passport, at least your US passport, and what you can, cannot, or should do. Your passport is submitted to you by your government, and is exclusively property of the government. It doesn't truly belong to you, it's just a document your government grants you to prove you are who you say you are, and to prove what country you come from to both foreign and local border control. In fact, the first page of the US passport, which is not the ID page for some reason, states, The Secretary of State of the United States of America hereby requests all whom it may concern to permit the citizen slash national of the United States named herein to pass without delay or hindrance, and in case of need, to give all lawful aid and protection. Basically, it's the United States government saying, Hey, we got your back, bro. Now, a few things for you to keep in mind. First, as US government property, you are of course required to surrender your passport if asked to do so by a US government representative, or to a border control or police officer from any country. However, altering or mutilating your passport, or carrying someone else's passport, or altering or mutilating someone else's passport are all strictly forbidden. Like, you're actually probably to go into jail forbidden. The only people who are allowed to make any alterations in your passport are, of course, border officials. Like, the people in the airport who flip over to a certain page and put a stamp there. Okay, now on to the fun stuff. Of course, as we all know from a previous award-winning video of mine, not all passports are created equal. Different countries' passports grant their holders different visa restrictions. For example, Mexico's border control requires everyone entering on a Kuwaiti passport to have a visa issued to them by the Mexican embassy in their area, whereas American passport holders can essentially just show up to the border. However, this of course is the exact opposite from how it's done in Saudi Arabia. Interestingly, most Americans don't actually possess a passport of their own, and may never have at all. For many Americans, a passport simply isn't necessary, since it's something we literally only need if we want to travel to another country, and we all know how often Americans do that. However, things are different in some other countries. In Russia, for example, Russian citizens often have two different types of passports, one for external travel, basically just a normal passport, and something called an internal passport. The internal passport is a document required for all Russian citizens above the age of 14, and is used as documentation for travel around Russia, usually when boarding trains, though it is valid for some certain neighboring countries like Belarus and Kazakhstan. It's not just Russia's internal passport system either. Most countries around the world grant some certain citizens different types of passports. For the US passport, just to keep everything simple, there is more than just a regular passport, like what I have. Some notable examples also include the maroon colored official passport, used largely by politicians and military personnel serving abroad, the black covered diplomatic passport for high ranking politicians and diplomats, and of course the emergency passport, just in case you're stuck abroad and need to get a passport quickly. As you may have guessed, diplomatic and service passports also often have different visa requirements than regular passports, as diplomats and government workers will generally have different protections and priorities for the host country than regular tourists. In the olden days, passports were just little booklets with ID info and a bunch of pages to stamp, but most countries around the world in recent years have been shying away from this for biometric passports, which you can identify with this little rectangular logo with the circle thing in it. Nowadays, these passports are often issued exclusively instead of their non-biometric counterparts, as many countries are starting to require travelers to enter with biometric passports. Biometric passports are just like regular passports, but with a special microchip inside, which saves data about the user's biometric info, which helps with things like facial recognition for automatic passport checks, fingerprint info, and even iris scan info. Finally, onto the fun cultural stuff. Since passports are essentially little booklets displaying your nationality, it's perhaps no surprise that many countries take the chance to put many different national symbols and features on their passport covers. Some notable examples include everything from Germany's Bundesada to Brazil's Southern Cross and Iran's right side opening. Many countries will also put mentions to any major organizations that they're a part of, like Antigua and Barbuda with CARICOM or Germany and the European Union. 
The color of the passport covers also play a surprising role in this as well. Though there are varying shades, there are only four passport color groups in the world, blues, reds, greens, and blacks. Red passports are often supported by current and former communist countries and countries in the Indian community in South America. However, the European Union has adopted a pan-EU burgundy shade, which every member except Croatia for some reason has adopted. Even some non-EU member nations, like Turkey and Serbia, have adopted this color in their passports because of… well… Of course, with breakfast due to take effect in the end of March, there has even been talk to change the British passport from its current shade of EU red to its old shade of blue, matching with those of the US, Canada, and Australia, which will of course be made in France. Wait, but what about New Zealand? Well, anyone who knows anything about New Zealand, or at least knows how to say Kiwarta, knows that New Zealand's national color is black, insert all blacks reference, and so their passports are of course the same color. Thank you as always for watching, and if you are interested in traveling to other countries while also supporting the channel, then be sure to visit the affiliate links that I have put in the description of this video for iVisa.com, a website that makes getting travel visas hilariously quick and easy, so be sure to check them out. Other than that, be sure to like and subscribe to learn something new every Sunday.